So approximately 66 million years ago, our planet has gone through a major climatic change. A result of a visitor that impacted the planet suddenly changing the climate for the worst. But in the last 65 million years, there actually have been quite a few other periods when the climate changed for one reason or another. And in most of these cases, we actually still have no idea what exactly happened and why the planet changed so much. But based on a lot of different fossil records and a lot of different analysis of things like ice cores, modern studies have established that the average temperature on the planet has never really remained the same for a very long time. But there are specifically several periods that are exceptionally intriguing. For example, right here you can see that there was a major glaciation of Antarctica, which then disappeared for some reason a few million years later, just to reappear approximately 12 million years ago. But at the same time, the first few million years after the impact that killed the dinosaurs, the temperature on the planet for the most part was a little bit toasty. On average it was actually several degrees higher than today. But when you look at this graph, there is one spike that really stands out. PETM. Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. A still somewhat unexplained event that approximately 55 million years ago suddenly increased the temperature on the planet by about 5 to 6 degrees, causing the extinction of at least certain organisms, but more importantly, sort of showing us what happens if there is a sudden increase in levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Because all of the modern studies established that there is a very high correlation between high levels of CO2 during this time and high temperatures. But the levels were much higher than today and we'll discuss this near the end of the video. Because what's actually interesting here is that this release of CO2 took approximately 20,000 to maybe 50,000 years in total. But once the CO2 was in the atmosphere, these relatively high temperatures lasted for about 200,000 years. The global average was increased by 5 to 8 degrees Celsius. Yet, mysteriously enough, even today it's not entirely clear what actually happened here. It's not clear if this was once again a result of a major collision, a result of some kind of a orbital forcing, or basically one of the Milankovitch cycles becoming too extreme, something related to the Sun, or a major dramatic release of methane similar to what's happening today. With the only thing being clear is that there was definitely a major carbon emission based on the spike of carbon-12 recorded in various plankton organisms such as foraminifera you see right here, that actually increased in numbers during this time and dramatically increased the number of carbon-12 recorded in their shells, implying that there is definitely a very strong correlation between carbon and the temperature. But up until recently it was not clear what may have caused this. And now we have at least one major study that as always you can find in the description below that provides us with very specific answers, very strong evidence, and even to some extent explains what must have happened afterwards. Because if once again you look at this graph, you'll notice that suddenly the temperature actually starts dropping with the planet cooling down even more, reaching the temperatures we have today and entering what's known as the Ice Age. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of these new discoveries and what all of this might mean, focusing on the most likely explanation for what must have happened 55 million years ago. And as you must have read from the title already, it was most likely volcanoes. But not your stereotypical volcanoes that we usually see once in a while. Here we're talking about a major basaltic shield volcano that was tremendously large in size. Here is roughly the area of this volcano and it basically stretched all the way from Greenland down to the United Kingdom and all the way east to Norway, the large area known as the North Atlantic Igneous Province. And this particular Igneous Province is actually responsible for some iconic structure in the UK such as the Fingal Cave or the Giant's Causeway. These were created around the same time and represent the edge of this province. There are even major volcanic structures visible in Scotland all created around the same time. But the thing is, this was always the biggest suspect for this particular event, it just there was never really enough evidence. And looks like now the scientists managed to find just the right location to try to prove this once and for all. In this case, focusing on the location in Denmark that was not part of this volcanic eruption, but turns out has quite a large amount of deposits that seem to be visible from around this time and were most likely the result of major explosive events that suddenly released huge amounts of materials spreading it all across Europe 
forming these huge deposits over time. And so, completely by luck, one of the sections in Denmark became exposed over time, and it's now actually possible to study all of this by directly looking at these formations in a location known as Fur in Denmark. And turns out, hundreds of different ash layers can be actually discovered here that will be impossible to explain unless something massive happened during this time, something that would definitely change the climate. But the question is, how do we know it's a volcano? Well, here this is where the analysis had to involve chemical composition and various anomalous elements. In this case, these are known as volcanic proxies, so things like, for example, osmium and things like mercury, which seem to be highly elevated in these deposits. These are actually extremely similar to what we usually find in modern volcanoes as well. And furthermore, lithium and osmium abundance indicates that during this time there was a really large amount of weathering and huge amount of erosion and also extremely active hydrological cycle. In essence, confirming very high temperatures, very high levels of CO2 and a major dramatic change of climate on the planet. Although in this case, all of this volcanic rock would then also accelerate CO2 reabsorption, resulting in a major drop in temperature relatively quickly as well. Which is most likely why we get this unusual spike. First the temperatures jumped dramatically as the CO2 was released, and then the temperatures dropped as soon as CO2 became incorporated into various volcanic rock. Although here it's important to note that the evidence from Denmark only shows us some of the most explosive events that happened during this volcanic activity. And it's quite clear that all of this was happening for millions of years. As a matter of fact, it probably started at least 64 million years ago and ended approximately 54 million years ago. So it was active for about 9 million years, with the peak activity happening 56 to 54 million years ago. And so during this time, approximately 1 million cubic kilometers of magma was probably released, in the process unleashing approximately 35 trillion tons of carbon. And the calculations from this paper suggest that the total levels of CO2 in the atmosphere was anywhere between 840 to maybe 1600 parts per million. With this raising the temperatures by at least 5 degrees. Now today's levels are obviously much lower, in this case approximately 418 ppm, that's when I'm making this video, but one of the main reasons a lot of scientists want to study PETM period or this unusual spike in temperature is really to understand what effect CO2 might have if we basically keep releasing CO2 in the atmosphere for the next few hundreds of years. And so according to calculations in this case, it might take humans hundreds of years of modern CO2 production to try to reach the same levels. But that's not really the main point of the paper. The main point is to try to understand the connection between CO2 and the climate change on the planet, while also figuring out exactly what it does to the planet when it does happen. For example, here's a map showing us what the surface probably was like during this period of time. You can actually explore it a little bit better by yourself by using one of the cool simulations from Ian Webster that to some extent shows us what the planet was like back in the days. As you can see, no ice pretty much anywhere and lots and lots of water everywhere as well. But what's actually really unusual during this period is that change of water levels and the overall change in the North Atlantic. During this time, North Sea was actually completely cut off from North Atlantic, forming this unusual region you see right here. And all of this only took approximately 12,000 years. And there's actually something really unusual that happened during this period, pretty much during this PTM period, which lasted for possibly millions of years. When the North Sea was completely cut off, it created a very strange subtropical environment that actually became paradise for one type of a plant. The plant you see right here. Azola filiculoides. Now this is a type of a fern that grows in the water that has a very unique property of absorbing CO2 to extreme levels. As a matter of fact, it's one of the biggest CO2 sinks on the planet. And based on a lot of fossil records from North Atlantic, in the last couple of decades scientists discovered something really strange. During this time, pretty much the entire North Sea was covered in this unusual plant for practically millions of years. It most likely peaked around 49 million years ago and is known as the Azola event. And so this whole region was covered in these unusual plants for a very very long time. And it's mostly because this was an isolated region and it created perfect conditions for these unusual plants. But because there are such strong CO2 absorbers, they basically kept absorbing CO2 from the air for many many thousands and millions of years. 
And so if we come back to this graph, you'll notice that approximately 49 million years ago, suddenly the temperature started dropping more and more and more, at some point reaching what's known as Antarctic glaciation. And so one of the modern explanations for what must have happened back then and why the planet suddenly started cooling down so much, eventually entering the Ice Age, is actually because of this unusual event involving these very unusual plants. Here's actually roughly what they look like on the surface. And so it's quite likely that this very unusual aquatic fern reduced the CO2 levels quite dramatically over a period of about 800,000 years, changing the planet from greenhouse Earth to essentially icehouse Earth, eventually transforming planet Earth into something a little bit more similar to what it is today. Although since then the temperatures have dropped even more for reasons that are still unknown to us. Which I guess to some extent is also good news for what's happening to the planet today. No matter what happens to humans or our activity, at some point the planet is going to find a way to recover everything, even if we might not survive the actual event. Now that's not really the main point of the video, the main point is that, first of all, Earth always finds a way, and second of all, very extreme events like PETM tend to lead to other events, such as the Azul event, that basically counteract everything, producing opposite effects. With all of these of course being really exciting and very interesting discoveries, just in regards to our understanding of how planet Earth works and how the biosphere tends to take care of everything eventually. With all of these records, then captured by various miniature organisms that turn into tiny sediments, serving as a kind of a record for what happened to planet Earth. But exactly where all of this goes in the next few millions of years, at this point nobody knows. As a matter of fact, we even have no idea why this particular period that you see right here, known as Quaternary Period, essentially has these ice ages that seem to have a cycle that changed even more a million years ago. And we actually recently talked about this because it was discovered that during this period, humans could have gone extinct. You can find this video in the description. But on this note, when it comes to PETM, it looks like volcanoes were probably the reason. Although in some of the previous videos you can find in the description, we did discuss alternative explanations. Nevertheless, when it comes to the climate change, it's always going to be happening no matter if we are here or not, but learning about the effects and how to maybe counteract them is definitely important. Anyway, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are additional discoveries. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.